what's going on guys it's preach here and today we're doing something a little bit funky you ready for it you ready for it i know you guys have been waiting for it that's right it's tree dance time oh yeah we like the tree dance it's gonna be awesome we're doing resto druid and we're going to take you through all the good jazz. We're going to be looking at, firstly, how cool it is just to spout flowers on the floor. And we're also going to be talking about the talents, the glyphs, the reforging. And then we're going to take you through a heroic run and show you exactly how things rock and roll. So, we're the Tree Druid, obviously. Okay, Restoration Druid. And as we've said it through all our Healer Guides channel, uh, guys, on the channel, is that... The spells have changed since Wrath of the Lich King, and it's been more the case for Druids that's changed even more so, okay? So we're going to tell you a little bit about how the spells have changed, so if you're used to playing Wrestle Druid a certain way, and you're wondering, how do I get into this cataclysm mix of things? I want to heal, I used to be a healer, but things have changed so dramatically, Preacher Man. How do I get into the role of things, and should I wait till I've got epic, epic gear? Absolutely not. As we proved in the Restoration Shaman Guide, you need the bare minimum of gear to get through the door to heal those heroics. That is a fact, I have proven that to you already. So let's look at our guy, this is Preach the Immortal. Ooh, such a cool title, guys. Anybody who got the Immortal knows how big of a bro fist that is to everybody around you. Being the Immortal is awesome. Basically, what I've done here is I've just wearing my Moon King gear. That's right. Some uh, some items aren't exactly tailored for the restoration way of doing things, but that's no problem. We don't care because the, the sets are pretty similar, so it doesn't really matter. What stats are important to us? Well, Intellect, guys. Gotta get your intellect up. Gotta be a smarter druid. We gotta be smarter. That's right. We gotta be smarter. We gotta be more intellect. More intellect gives us more manners. It gives us more spell power, which goes to our healing. So our heals, every heal we throw out, heals for more. That is what's important, guys, okay? Intellect, intellect, intellect. You wanna be jamming intellect all the way through the nose, unless you're not gonna pick up a decent intellect bonus, and by that I mean 20 intellect or more, you are going to be jamming pure intellect, okay? We can't reforge your intellect. It's a main stat. We need intellect from gems so you're going to be gemming intellect but if you get a nice fat bonus we look at these legs here we get 40 intellect and a 20 intellect bonus and we've got a blue slot so what do we do there what's going on in your mind where well, you think thinking to yourself i could put two red gems in there that would give me a total of 80 intellect or i could put intellect and an intellect spirit gem in there and get 80 intellect and 20 spirit so we win by 20 spirit and we like wins because win grows our bro fist so we can fill the room with it and be absolute ballers that's what it's all about so when you're gemming you're gemming for intellect you're looking at those set bonuses are you going to get 20 intellect or just generally are you going to get more intellect by gemming pure intellect or by mixing those gems up simple enough what gear do we want we want spirit leather we want leather items with some spirit on them if you've got spirit on them they're guaranteed to have other good juicy stats as well we want spirit leather why because spirit is our main secondary stats that is the big one okay we need spirit to regen our mana that is where our manners are going to come from but we are not going to be gemming for pure spirit no we're not we're gemming for intellect we need more spell power it's like will come naturally and if you've got higher end gear you're going to be in a position where your mana actually controls itself quite nicely through to the end of a fight finishing the end of a fight with full mana is wasteful that is a waste of good juicy spirit that could be used elsewhere but in general as we hit level 85 and we want to get into our dungeons we need some good spirit so what comes next preacher well let me start say what comes next let me some say let me say what's right at the bottom what is our worst stat as our resto druid it's crit go away crits we don't want you in our house preacher's house is unhappy with your critical ways get lost piss off we don't want you no, we don't. That is our first choice for reforging. But what are we going to reforge to? Well, this depends on your gear level. The higher end Moonkins are going to go, I wonder if he talks about rejuve clipping. <laughs> I will talk it about a little bit, but in our early days, we're not possibly going to reach those stats, so we're not too worried about it. So our next main secondary stat is haste, people. Haste, haste, haste. Haste rating. Reduce our global cooldown even further. Make our hots tick that little bit faster and hopefully get an extra tick of hots. That's what we want. If you're a high end druid, around 2006 haste rating that is haste rating if you click in your spell and look at your haste it tells you your rating you can see i have 1426 around 2006 ish fully raid buffed we are going to see something very special happen our rejuvenation our number one hot that just heals for tremendous amounts is going to get an extra tick after that it is not possible people in the current gear to possibly get another rejuve tick so after that we're actually going to get rid of our haste and buff mastery then comes our mastery and you're preaching you're saying preacher Mastery? Really? What is our mastery? Well, I'll tell you all about it. It's harmony. Harmony. I can't harmony with myself, which is quite sad and makes me very very lonely on our resto druid. I wish Ghosty was here. 
So what does Harmony do? Let's have a little read. Because what do I always tell you guys? Read your talents. Don't just copy somebody's spec and say, I'm spec correctly. It doesn't matter if you don't spec correctly. If you don't know what you spec into and what that spell does. By reading your spells, you will literally work out most of what your class does just by reading. Very easy. Your direct healing is increased by an additional 15%. Awesome. What is direct healing, you might ask? That is things like nourish, healing touch and regrowth. Is increased by additional 50% and casting your direct healing spells grants you an additional 15% bonus to periodic healing for 10 seconds. 15% bonus to our dot our hot healing. That's immense. High end druids, my friends, high end druids maintain uh, who are very comfortable with their spells maintain this harmony buff 100 percent there it is harmony you see it only lasts 10 seconds but 15 percent buff to your hots that is huge absolutely huge and big high-end druids are going to be working on keeping harmony up 100 percent at the time as we've just lit a level 8 to 5 we're not going to worry about that too much we're going to focus on how our spells interact with each other and how we get good efficient healing out without going oom all the time and worrying that we're not going to be able to cope with these heroic dungeons we might have a bad tank we might have bad dps's how are we going to handle it doesn't matter. Don't worry too much about your harmony for now, guys, okay? Understand that basically you want int gear, you want to get your spirit up, you want spirit leather, and then you want to be reforging away from crit mainly towards haste primarily, and then uh, mastery. If it's a crit haste item, you're obviously going to be picking up some mastery. Okay, guys? Dead easy. Let's have a look. So we had some mastery on this item. I reforged that to a bit more haste, because at my level, haste is slightly more important. I have got items like this, guys, because this is my Moonkin set, and it has hit on it. <gasps> oh, a hit, Preacher. It's so bad. Don't worry about it too much. If you're a Moonkin and been asked to heal, it isn't the end of the world, people. It's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. Hey, spirit item, leaving well enough alone. Hey, spirit is all good. We're happy with that. And then we get a crit mastery item like this. Bye bye crit. You can see it's reforged to hit on here. But we would obviously reforge to haste. That's what we would be reforging to. Don't worry about it. The only reason I haven't reforged this character is one. To prove that you don't have to. For heroic if you just need to help your friends out and heal it up. And otherwise I always play Moonkin on this guy pretty much. And I just you know it's not worth me reforging backwards and forwards all the time. Understand that you should be reforging away from crit mainly. Towards haste. And then when you reach that 2006 rating, you want to turn that into some mastery as well to buff that harmony up. Because that's a lot more healing. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, let's look at our talents. Let's understand what we've chosen. Now, you have a little bit of leeway with the Resto Druid. But this is the talent spec I've gone with. I think it's personally quite tasty. There's a decision I've made down the line that you might disagree with. And you can change that if you wish. Let's talk about it. First of all, Heart of the Wild. Increase your intellect by 6%. That is awesome, isn't it? It's a percentage buff. So every point of intellect we get is going to be boosted that little touch more because of this talent. And that is why uh, intellect becomes so important. It just c c grows and grows and grows. Really yummy. Naturalist. Increase, uh, reduce the cast time of your healing touch and nourish spells by half a second. This is going to bring me to the next point of how our spells has changed. Let me cast you back. Way back in the days. In vanilla. I played a druid there. We used a healing touch rank 4. That was removed from the game. You could no longer down rank spells. And then they moved to a sort of TBC. And then Wrath of the Lich King followed suit with the type of healing. Which was all about hots. We got Tree of Life form. And we stayed in Tree of Life form. Where we could realistically only cast hots pretty much. Okay. So we had hots only. Then we had uh, the spells like healing touch and nourish added to us. Which we could cast in tree form. <sighs> Nourish was a nice big fast spell. It was supposed to mix in with things like Flash Heal and Flash of Light. Because all these healers have these really fast heals and hots take a long time before they take effect. What happened towards the end of the game is you found that healers with these fast spells, who could cast them indefinitely because mana was a non-issue, were always roasting druids. Absolutely, because they had these fast heals and our hots just didn't have time to take into effect. So Nourish came into the game, which basically made us a nice quick fast heal. That has changed. Nourish is now our go-to efficient low healing spell. Okay, let me show you a Nourish. Nourish 2.3 seconds cast under my current situation. And look, it costs hardly any mana to cast. Only heals for about 6k. But that is our go-to heal. We're never going to go oom um casting Nourish. So we can just spam Nourish. That's fine and dandy. Healing Touch, which anybody who's ever seen the joke uh, Mimi that was made of tree druids. Healing Touch was made to sound like this. Healing Touch. Healing Touch had about four second cast time. Oh my god. Can you imagine trying to cast a heal for four seconds? <laughs> Absolutely insane. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Healing Touch is now a larger efficient heal. Okay. It costs it heals for a lot more, but costs a touch more mana than nourish, as you can see, but it heals for a lot. You see, 20k basically compared to the 6k. So if we've got a guy who's particularly low on health and we've, he's not gonna die very soon, we're gonna be using healing touch. Okay. 
Moving across, natural shapeshifter. Uh, yes, it reduces the mana cost of our shapeshifter by 20%, but more importantly, increases the duration of our Tree of Wind farm by 6 seconds. So while we're in Tree of Wind, we're literally going to be lasting for another 6 seconds, looking cool like Lord of the Rings just shit its pants, people. We only pick up 1 out of 2 of Blessing the Grove, and this is going to bring me on to Rejuve. Increase the healing done by a Rejuve by 2%. Two, another point there would be increased by another 2%, and now you're thinking, but I love Rejuve! I love Rejuve too, guys. But back in the day, let me cast your mind back again. Uh, Ulduar and uh, well, Wrath of Lich King and Team C, Rejuve was very cheap and healed for a ton. It was a great spell, and what you would literally have is Tree Druids rejuving the entire raid. That's 25 people just spamming Rejuve and having no mana issues. Rejuve has changed. Rejuve is still amazing healing. It really is. Rejuve is awesome healing, but it costs a lot more mana. Let me spam some Rejuves and watch that mana bar go down very quickly if we spam Rejuve. Look at that. Down, 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 and our mana bar goes. So we can no longer continuously spam the raid with Rejuve, especially in low B gear. In higher end raiding, yes, you can cast a lot more Rejuves, but in our level 85, just sort of capping area, we cannot just spam Rejuve. However, Rejuve is still awesome. Rejuve is an amazing spell. It heals for a lot. It's well worth the mana if that person is going to get the full benefit of the Rejuve. So if you've got a guy who's low on health and he's got plenty of time before he has to be, um, before he could take another set of damage, Rejuve is going to work out really nicely for you. Okay, guys? Master Shapeshifter. We only care about Tree of Wind Farm. Increase the healing by another 4%. Oh. 4% more healing. Yes, please. Nuff said. Improve Rejuve. Boosts the effects of Rejuve and our Swift Mend. If you're not sure what Swift Mend is, go ahead and read it, guys. What is Swift Mend? Instantly heals a friendly target that has an active Rejuve or Regrowth effect by 14,296. Heals for a lot. Uh, and it also causes some other groovy stuff that we'll talk about later. So that is a nice straightforward buff to those. Revitalize. This sounds better than it actually is, but it's still pretty great. When you periodically heal with Rejuve or Life Bloom spells, you have a 20% chance to instantly regain 2% of your total mana. Total mana, that's what's important. Not base mana, total mana, all the mana you've got. Base mana is your mana without any gear on. You'll see some spells are based on base mana, uh, and some spells are based on your total mana. 2% of your total mana is a lot, but it cannot occur more than once every 12 seconds. So you're not going to see it a lot, but over the course of a longer fight, it's going to give you a ton of mana back, guys. In addition, when you can also grant replenishment to the raid, Replenishment is going to regen mana to the raid naturally, okay? So it's really good. You get the benefit of that if you're the one who needs it too. Nature Swiftness, you should know what Nature Swiftness is by now. A lot of classes have Nature Swiftness. Basically, it's your first healing cooldown and it makes your next casted spell instant cast. So it's an emergency heal. If that spell is a healing spell, the amount of heal will be increased by 50%. So in your oh shit moments, Nature Swiftness is going to come and save your backside so you can be a total boss. Nobody died. Nature Swiftness, the hell out of the guy. No worries. Nature's Bounty. We're going to talk about regrowth now. Increase the crit chance of regrowth by 60%. In addition, when you have rejuvenation active on three or more targets, the cast time of your Nourish spell is reduced by 30%. Great for raid healing. Um, but let's talk about regrowth. What was regrowth used to be? We used to keep three hots rolling on the tanks generally. We used to have three life blooms. We used to have a rejuve and a regrowth. Regrowth used to take a few seconds to cast. But it also gave us a hot, which was a great hot. It didn't heal for lows, but it lasted about 30 seconds. Regrowth has been changed. Regrowth is now our fast, inefficient spell. We don't want to be casting regrowth if we can help it. Certainly not hard casting regrowth. Regrowth is now very quick, 1.4 seconds, heals for about 8k, and gives us a hot which lasts only 6 seconds. So it's not like it used to be, guys. If you're used to using regrowth in the old way, stop it. It will waste your mana. Regrowth will chew your mana through. Watch my mana bar. If we start spamming regrowth, it disappears. Okay, look at that. Quarter of the mana gone in just 4 spell casts. Don't use regrowth that powerful. When we do use regrowth, we want nature's bounty, so we get a nice big fat crit effect of 60% on that. You will still get a hot, but it's nowhere near as good as it used to be. Be aware of that. Empower Touch. Increase the direct healing done by your healing touch, regrowth, and nourish spells, which are our three, as we've already spoke about, hard-casted spells. And grants those spells a 100% chance to refresh the duration of life bloom on targets. Important, because our tank will be having three stacks of life bloom. As you can see here, three stacks. Now, how do you think... How are we going to refresh that? In general, we're going to be using Nourish. Keep those three stacks rolling and just nourishing. It's going to keep refreshing it. Okay, see that way it's popped up to 10 seconds and keeps our harmony up. Yes, we can refresh Life Bloom by just casting another Life Bloom. But we can also use heal, uh, Nourish, if possible, our Healing Touch. No problem either way. And that's going to refresh it and give us harmony. So be aware that you're keeping harmony up and you're getting that extra bonus. Malfurion's gift. Thank you, Malfurion, you baller. Thanks for throwing us that gift. 
When you heal with your life bloom spell, you have four percent chance to cause the omen of clarity. What's omen of clarity? It's clear cast. Clear cast means our next casted spell is free. What are we going to be using it on? A couple of choices. Regrowth, definitely, if it's an emergency situation, because uh, regrowth costs us a lot of mana. Or we can use healing touch, which generally uses more mana. Uh, uses about the same amount of mana, sorry, but generally will give us a bigger, fatter heal. So judge it yourself. When Omel of Clarity procs, feel free to judge what you should be casting next, okay? Because it's going to be free. And Nourish would be a waste of a clear cast proc, because Nourish is cheap anyway. So you want to use expensive spells while under the Omen of Clarity buff. Be aware of it. Efflorath Efflorescence. If you want to know how to pronounce that in English, it's Efflorescence. Your Swift Mend spell causes the, ta uh, causes the healing flora to spout beneath the target, restoring health equal to 12% of the amount healed by your Swift Mend to three of the most injured targets within eight yards. This is a brilliant spell, and you can be very clever with it. If you cast a... You've obviously got Reduce rolling, as thus, and then you Swift Mend it. If I was stood on my own, that is a waste of an Efflorescence. What you want to be doing is looking at sort of the melee or a group of casters, regrowth in them, and if you swift mend them in a, to put a moment of pure AoE damage, you're going to be healing a lot of people, at least three, even, even it out. It's a smart heal. It'll pick the most needed to be healed people. It'll do it for you. It's brilliant. And the same thing like this, Wild Growth. Wild Growth is our big AoE heal. It heals more than the initial cast, and then it gradually wears off. It's still a hot, but each hot, each tick of the hot afterwards gets worse and worse. So, how do we use this spell? It's a smart heal. You don't need to think too much about it. What you want to do is try and cast it in a group of at least six people and just keep it topping up. Obviously, in our heroics, we have a maximum of five, so that's no issue. It's generally going to heal us all. Uh, it does a nice amount of healing. It's pretty good, guys. It's not too expensive for what it does to heal everybody. There it is. Really, really nice. Don't worry about Wild Growth too much. Try and keep it on cooldown, especially in heavy AoE situations. It's going to really catch up with the healing. Mix that with Efflorethanth, and you're certainly going to start putting out some big AoE healing. This is the choice that we all have to make, and I've decided to skip it to show you that you don't actually need it. In general, I would prefer to have this in heroic runs. I've got to be honest. Nature's Cure. Empowers your remove corruption spell to also remove a magic effect. Every healer now has dispel magic. In heroics, we're certainly not going to expect the DPS to dispel magic, because that is generally our role to deal with debuffs and such. So a lot of people feel it's mandatory. Hmm. I kind of agree with them, uh, especially for heroics where you're the only healer. Uh, but some people like to skip it and then feel almost bad for not having had it. I think... I'm going to show you that you can get away with not having it. If you just hit level 85, I would certainly pick this up. Uh, I'm only going to not take it because I want to show you that you can do it without. That's fine. You can actually out heal the damage. That's okay. But it, the amount of damage reduced... Simply by dispelling the debuff instead of trying to out heal it is enormous, guys. In raids, it's a little bit different. Not everybody needs to take it because there's other dedicated dispellers. So I want to look at it from both sides, and I also want to show you that you don't absolutely have to get it. Gift of the Earth Mother. Well, we're just getting gifts left, right, and centre today. It's Christmas up in this bad boy. Gift of the Earth Mother. Increase the healing done by your life bloom expires by 15% and causes your rejuvenation spell to instantly heal for 15% of the total periodic effect, which is huge. Really good. So our life blooms are going to run off at some points. It's just naturally occurring. If there's lots of things going on, we are naturally going to let life bloom fall off. Especially while we're growing into from being a, a ham fingers to a pro, we're certainly going to see our life blooms fall off. And I'm no doubt going to let my life blooms fall off in the heroic demonstration. So we get a big fatty buff whenever that expires. Just I'll cast three so you can see the type of heal that we get at the end of it. There's three, as we generally have on our tank. And also our reju is going to heal straight away, which is really, really good. So that's all good stuff. Swift reju, reduce the global cooldown of your reju to half a second. So haste is not going to affect the Reduve Global. Boom! 17k when it expires. Yeah! Really nice. And finally, Tree of Win. Yeah. We used to be permanently in tree farm, people. We used to live there. And I actually liked it. A lot of people hated the change and then gradually grew to adore it. Tree of Life Farm with just the hots was absolutely amazing. A lot of fun. Uh, the problem with it was a lot of people were going, I can't see my gear. I personally didn't care. Uh, it was such a fun little farm to run around in. We could never be interrupted unless we were casting Nourish, which would be newbie druidy healing. But now it's our big healing cooldown. Shapeshifting into a tree of awesome. Increase the healing done by 15%. Yum. E. And increase your armor by 120%. Yeah, PvP stuff. Also protects the caster from polymorph PvP stuff. In addition, some of your spells are temporarily enhanced while shapeshifted. Your enhanced spells are Life Bloom, Wild Growth, Regrowth, Entangling Roots, and Wrath. So you get some damage bonus from this for some boss fights. Think Chimeron, when you can no longer heal when he goes into Frenzy. Tree of Life Form and Wrath is going to do some bonus damage. What else can we do? 
Well, we can cast Life Bloom on everything, and Life Bloom is so cheap and so powerful. Life Bloom is awesome. We can just spam Life Bloom everywhere. Some druids used to use the trick of casting, uh, using Tree of Life Form early to cast Life Blooms on at least three targets and keep those rolling with Nourish to produce absolutely insane healing. I'm not going to comment on it. <laughs> if you want to try it, go ahead. Uh, Fura. So we move out of there into the Feral Combat Tree. We pick up two out of three in Fura. Grants you 100% chance to, to gain Rage. Fine. Uh, when you shapeshift into bear form, allows you to keep up 60% of your energy, blah blah blah, and increase your maximum mana by 10%. Mixed in with Heart of the Wild, glorious. You might want to think about putting three out of three in there for another 5% mana. It's all about being efficient, really, and these talents are pretty good. Let's have a look what we get out of the balance tree. Nature's greater. You gain a 15% spell haste after you cast Moonfire, Regrowth, or Insect Swarm. This effect has a one minute cooldown when you gain Loner blah, 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 Eclipse. No good. We are going to be casting Regrowth at some point. And when we do, we're going to get this Nature's Grace effect to get 15% spell haste to use our more cheaper, efficient heals. So think about that with your uh, Omen of Clarity that you're going to get this bonus of Nature's Grace along with it. Think about mixing these talents together. Just by reading them, we can see how they mesh. They synergize really well. Nature's Majesty. It's all a bit pompous. The Druid Trees, I find, a bit pompous and regal. Increase the critical strike chance with all spells by 4%. Might as well, because we need to move down to the next tree. That's why we pick it up. We don't want Starlight Wrath, because we don't really cast Wrath. So Nature's Majesty is a nice little 4% crit bonus. Crit is not great for us, but it's better than picking up a talent we're never going to use. We want Moonglow. Reduce the mana cost of your damaging healing spells by 9%. That is huge, isn't it? Huge mana reduction. Awesome stuff. Couple of spells I want to bring up quickly. Tranquility is awesome. Awesome guys, Tranquility is absolutely amazing and uh, you can heal pretty much a raid in a few seconds, especially when you combine that with Efflorescence, throw out a Wild Growth, Tree of Life form, uh, and obviously you do the Efflorescence and Tree of Life while you're in there for the extra healing and then Tranquility, you're going to see amazing healing done, crazy amounts of healing, uh, and I also want to talk about your Innovate, and we'll mention this in the Glyphs, hello Glyphers, you can see Glyph of Innovate is no more. Bye bye, Glyph of Innovate. Where are you? You're there. Glyph of Innovate. When we used to cast Innovate on other people, Innovate has been changed and changed so much by Blizzard because Innovate was far too powerful. A lot of guilds stacking Moonkins and spamming Innovate on fewer healers because they had infinite mana then if we could spam Innovate on them because the Moonkins didn't need it. Things like this caused Blizzard to say Innovate is too good. Innovate is now solely for us, guys. Innovate is our spell. Piss off anybody else who needs Innovate. Innovate is ours. Innovate only gains us 10% of our maximum mana now. So when are we going to use it? Round about 80-85% mana. We're going to be innovating ourselves on cooldown on boss fights. Yes, we are. We're going to innovate ourselves. Anybody who wants Innovate can go and run up a tree. We don't care. Innovate is ours. Go away. What other glyphs do we take? What are our primes? Glyph of Rejuve. As we said, Rejuve is awesome. It is really good, especially on people who can get the full benefit of it. So we want to buff that by 10%. Glyph of Swiftmen. This is major, guys. You need this. Your Swiftmen ability no longer consumes a Rejuve or a Regrowth effect from the target. So when we Swiftmen someone, they no longer lose their hot. It's really, really important. Glyph of Life Bloom. Increase the critical stri strike chance of your Life Bloom by 10%. That is enormous, isn't it, for one Glyph? We don't even gem or, or reforge towards crit because we pick up this passively by a Glyph. Really makes up for the wasted stat priorities that way. Really, really good. Okay, Life Bloom is going to be ticking all the time on our tanky boy. Let's keep that with 10% crit chance. Lovely amounts of healing. Really good. I think your actual mages are quite important as a Resto Druid. Glyph of Healing Touch. When you cast Healing Touch, the cooldown of your nature's swiftness is reduced by 10%. 10 seconds. Debatable on how useful that is, but it's certainly more useful than others. Um, Nature Swiftness is great. It's a great spell. No doubt about it. Instant cast holy shit spell and the chance to use that again sooner should we need it in these oh shit moments that keep repeating is great. Especially in raids where Healing Touch then becomes your primary spell over Nourish. Nourish just does not heal enough in raids. We are all about the Healing Touch. Glyph of Wild Growth. Your Wild Growth can affect one additional target. Useless for Heroics Preach. Yes, we know. But I always guide you. I see a lot of comments on my channel about Preach. You don't need 17% spell hit in a Heroic. I assume you guys will also be doing things like Barred in Hold. We'll also be doing things like early raids. And we'll certainly be trying to look towards raids. Because if it's all about PvE, it's in Preacher's House. And I don't want you to go into one of these raids. Start missing and come back and say, Preacher, I am missing. And you said to get 16% hit. That's why I tell you to get 17%. It's why I recommend you take Glyph of Wild Growth, because eventually you will end up in a raid of one sort of another, and an extra free person from a little major glyph like that is amazing. Glyph of Rebirth. Why is this good? 
because we will be the go-to people for the first reses. Warlocks don't like resing because it loses them DPS. Death Knights, like myself, do not like resing. It costs us DPS. Healers will res. You shouldn't have let the guy die in the first place. Ha ha ha. Troll face. Doesn't matter how they died. If they killed themselves, that's their own damn fault. But what you don't want to do is rebirth somebody. Uh, they have low health and they die again very quickly. This glyph will solve that problem for you and also prevent you having to heal them once they are rezzed. It's an amazing glyph. Get it. And I also recommend Glyph of Unburden Rebirth because carrying seeds to cast Rebirth is a pain in the backside. We do not want that. We do not want pains. We want pure fun on our class. And we certainly don't want to be in a situation where we need to Rebirth somebody and we haven't got a seed. We don't want that. Okay, guys? So, in general, if we're AoE healing, we're going to be casting some Reduce around. We're going to be Swift Mending it. We're going to be doing all this good jazz. Keep our Efflorescence down and all that good stuff. If we're healing a tank, we're keeping Life Blooms rolling. We're going to generally keep a Rejuve ticking on our tank. And we're going to refresh that good jazz with our Nourish, if possible. There's Clearcast. We're going to be using Clearcast on things like Regrowth. Because we get things like Nature's Grace, which is all Spell Haste buffs. Yum, yum, yum. Lots of hots for our tank and not wasting a lot of mana. Look at my mana. It is not going down very quickly. Awesome stuff. Okay, guys. That is our Resto Druid overview. I hope you enjoyed that. And now we're going to jump in Heroics. So if you want to see all that stuff that I just brabbled on about in action, check out the next video.